I'm Callie Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. This is Brief 453. talk about a lot of iPhone apps on Geek Brief because I have a place for app news over at iCali.tv. This one though is too exciting to just post on the other site. A Google Earth app is now available for the iPhone and so far I love it. Google Earth is one of those rare advances in technology that is so cool we all just want to show non-techie grandmothers. Google Earth for iPhone pretty much matches the experience of Google Earth on a desktop and takes advantage of multi-touch and the accelerometer to add some groovy extras. Pinch and pull is obvious. You zoom in and out and fly from place to place. Tilting the phone changes the orientation from satellite view to landscape. The application also adds a Wikipedia layer to provide additional information about the places you see and a panoramio layer to deliver high quality photos people have taken at different locations around the real earth. Quick is one of my favorite companies because they're passionate about getting streaming video working on just about any mobile phone that has a camera. Today they announced alpha release clients for the BlackBerry Pearl 8120, BlackBerry Pearl 8130, the BlackBerry Curve 8320 GSM, and the BlackBerry Bold. Alpha means you may or may not get the experience you'll get from a later version, but if you're adventurous and want to give it a try, you can download the app from quick.com slash sign underscore up. I've been loyal to Blockbuster because they're based in my hometown. Maybe that's a good reason? Maybe it's bad, but I think an announcement by Netflix today means I'm switching. 12,000 instant play movies and TV shows will now work on Macs. PC users have been enjoying Netflix streaming for quite some time. Streaming uses Microsoft Silverlight and will roll out to all Netflix subscribers by year's end. When we got home from the road trip, we had a pile of boxes waiting for us. In one box was a shiny new HP Media Smart Server. HP is sponsoring this episode. Let's take a look at the ports available on the Media Smart Server. The front has a single USB port, but the back has three more. It also has a gigabit ethernet port and nicest of all, an eSATA port. Another box had an iPhone accessory that I didn't expect to like at all. It's called the Griffin Air Curve and it amplifies the sound from built-in iPhone speakers without electricity. It's a simple inexpensive bass that looks like an ear canal. It adds 10 decibels of acoustic amplification by routing sound waves through a custom engineered wave guide. Watch, I'm gonna start my Jeff Smith ringtone and slide the phone into the air curve. Boom, it's louder. So in a different part of the house, I have a better chance at hearing the phone in the dock, out of the dock, in the dock, out of the dock. I love it. <laughs> it's very loud. I'm like shouting. <laughs> Also, you can route a charging cable through to charge your phone. That's it for today. I'll have lots of gadget news for you this week, some product reviews, part two of my chat with Leah Laporte, and hopefully a behind the scenes look at how the economy is affecting plans for the big trip. I'm Callie Lewis. Thanks for watching. When we got home from the road trip, we had a pile of boxes waiting for us. In one box was a shiny new HP Media Smart server. Not that one. Oh. <laughs> the next one? Yeah, no, <laughs> Heavy much? Heavy much, yes. <laughs>